This is the Masonic Light Podcast featuring Pete Ruggieri and Larry Maris. A non stuffy, somewhat humorous approach to understanding our craft. We guarantee you'll have a good time or your money back. This podcast is not endorsed or approved by the Grand Lodge or any jurisdiction. In fact, they'll probably hate it. And now, here's our host, Pete Ruggieri and Larry Maris. And welcome. Welcome back from hiatus. This is uh, Pete with uh, Larry. Say hi, Larry. Hello there, Pete. And our officially now a full-time member, Jason. Hey, how are you? I think it was full-time a couple weeks ago, but... Well, now you're officially official. Officially full-time. official. All right. That's because as of right now, you're the only one who knows how to work the equipment. I think if you'd stay away from Atlanta, you'd be totally full-time. I know. Damn Atlanta. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, you know, we had a, a, a slight little mishap with, uh, with our show. No fault of our own. No. Um, our producer uh, decided he was not going to be in the podcasting business anymore. Um, just the, the rent versus time versus income equation just wasn't working out. So uh, I pulled my Visa card out about a week ago, and I bought some equipment. And yes, now we, we are officially podcasters. So uh, here we are. So let's try and catch up. What have we been talking about since our audiences last heard us? What, what have we had going on in our Masonic worlds? Mm. I know I've been busy, but... Uh, you've been the busiest of all of us. I mean, you've had your, your trip to New Orleans uh, with Grotto. I mean, you've got Colonial Grotto Association uh, coming up tomorrow. Or not, yeah, it is tomorrow. That's right. You've yeah. got a lot of things going on. So why don't you tell us about your travels? All right. Well, so I guess the, the biggest thing was um, Supreme Council for Grotto, M-O-V-P-E-R. M-O-U-S-E. Down in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And I just got to tell you, um, it was an amazing time. Um, I, I've never been to a national event for any other Masonic body, so I can't compare. Um, but when you mix in the fact that New Orleans is New Orleans, um, it just brings so much more to the table. Um, it would have been helpful if I had somebody explained it to me before because I really only needed to be there for Thursday and Friday. But uh, we got down there on Tuesday and started drinking immediately. Um, I don't know if I can recount all the stories, but, you know, um, you know like the first night we went out and uh, we were at a bar and we had to quick leave the bar because a two- or three-inch-long cockroach was crawling on Dominic Falcone's neck. Dominic's the uh, monarch of Azim Grotto. And uh, so once he saw the, felt the cockroach on his neck, that, that led us to leave that bar. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I guess the big news from the event was um, we had an election for uh, captain, captain of the Guard. And Captain of the Guard is the bottom of the line for the national. And both gentlemen that were running were from the Colonial Grotto Association. They're both from our area. There was um, um, Victor Mann from Azim Grotto, who's a good friend of ours, and uh, there was uh, Bob from uh, Pittsburgh, another just good man. So there's nothing negative about either person. Uh, we just all voted for our friend Victor because he's our personal friend outside of uh, Freemasonry as well. Um, turns out Victor won by one vote. So it was like the closest election that they've ever had. Um, and without even hesitation, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in Freemasonry, without even hesitation. Uh, they announced the vote, um, and Bob uh, Lorenz said that he pledged all his votes to go to Victor to make it unanimous. So, yeah, he could have been Al Gore, wanted to recount. He could have done something like that, but... Um, so we're looking forward to Victor this year, and uh, next year, if uh, Bob wants to do it, he's pretty much got everybody's support to, to go in unopposed. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we did something else. What else did I do? You are hosting the Colonial Grotto Association this year's meeting in beautiful downtown Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah, somehow I uh, made eye contact once again. You don't do that. Um, apparently, the last meeting was in Virginia. And the Colonial Grotto Association is in the 13 original colonies. It's somewhere in there. And the last one was in Virginia and had really poor turnout, I guess, because a lot of the people from New England um, maybe felt like it was too far to go. 
So they asked me if I could put this on here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we're having slightly better attendance. We're probably going to have 15 or 20 people show up. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be a good time. So tomorrow night we're going to have a bunch of people just we're going to go out bar hopping downtown Lancaster. Saturday morning we're going to have official business of the Grotto Association. Uh, we're going to be electing a new president of the Colonial Grotto, Grotto Association. Somebody warned me that they're nominating me. So maybe I can report back on that. I'm not too excited about it, but, you know, if they vote me in, I'll say yes. But Jason, they, if you hey, what's that? They know that, Pete. They know I that. know, I know. <laughs> Jason, what do you have going on? Anything Masonic? You've had a lot of people dying. Yeah, yeah, the, our lodge and, and even a few out of your lodge, but uh, it seems that every week we have a uh, funeral request. And, uh, yeah, it's been a little a little somber this uh, this summer so far. Uh, there's been a few picnics. I've, I was traveling. I was not in Atlanta, but I was in Chicago and Nashville, I think, since we've last recorded. Um, oh, actually, you guys did episode nine without me. I was in Nashville. That was our best episode, by the way. I know. I, I wasn't here. Best episode. Go figure. And what did we do masonically? I joined Commandery, finally got my, my orders, the Order of the Temple. Uh, did it in a, a one-day class setting. My petition had been in for over a year. And I didn't see an opportunity in sight to do them individually, so I, so I did the one day class, much to my chagrin. So, in and hind- you were telling me that in, in, in confidence, I guess I won't say confidence, private. You were telling me that uh, you felt like you didn't get the full experience. So, when I left, I I don't I don't want to say that I was upset, but I was I, I, yeah I was a little disappointed. However. It took so many people to make that event happen that, I mean, they did as good a job as they could have. I mean, they obviously had done rehearsals. It was, you know, two hours away. Three states came together. So they did a phenomenal job. Um, yeah, for those of you that have not gone through the Order of the Temple degree, um, trying to explain the best I can without violating any of my oaths here, but in my Masonic career, it is like the coolest, coolest degree to see. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it, I, I just really enjoyed it. And, um, when it's done properly one at a time, it's really impactful and meaningful to the candidate. Yeah. I don't know how they could have done it any more personal. I mean, there were 63 of us. So it was very difficult to get, you know, that really, really personal experience. I'm glad that I did it. Um, if I were going to recommend to a candidate that had to wait a year with no, you know, upcoming degrees in sight or orders in this case, I would recommend doing the first two in a one-day setting and then wait it out for a uh, order of the temple. My understanding is is they very rarely do the order of the temple just for one person because it is it's like eleven acts. There's you know tons of setup and tear down and shuffling the candidates around. It's not like a blue lodge degree where you're in and out. Uh, but I've heard that they've been able to do it a little bit more personal when you have you know ten maybe a dozen guys going through, you can take the time to, because there's parts just like we do in Blue Lodge that everybody can see and parts that they can't see, and or at least do in a group setting and not a group setting. But it was great. I mean, I'm glad that I got it done and uh, very excited. That completes the York Wright uh, chapter for me until, you know, anybody calls me. <laughs> yeah, until <laughs> someday if you get the magical tap on your shoulder from AMD or somewhere. Right. And uh, we had Goose and Gridiron uh, breakfasts. We've got a pin finally coming. There's been many revisions and talks about it, but I think the decision was finally made that, uh, you know, Goose and Gridiron was one of the uh, original, if not the original meeting place uh, 300 years ago or 299 years ago. So we have a commemorative pin uh, highlighting our breakfast group, the Goose and Gridiron, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Goose and Gridiron Breakfast Society, as I think we officially just dubbed it. And those will be for sale, and they're going to fund our podcast operation because uh, Pete so graciously laid out the plastic to make this happen. First payments due in uh, September. Well, get those pins going. I guess that's on me. Uh, oh, I actually had some other Masonic stuff, too. I had a, um, as soon as I got back from New Orleans, I had a uh, Tall Cedars Ladies' Night picnic that you both uh, skipped out on. Um, it was outside at a VFW in Mount Joy in a pavilion. Um, everybody was bitching and whining about the heat. And believe it or not, even though I'm fat and I hate the heat, 
after spending a week in New Orleans in July, it felt just so nice and awesome. And it was nice actually not complaining for once because I was so acclimated to the super hot heat. Yeah. Uh, one thing that they did there at the uh, Tall Cedars event was a, uh, they called it a white elephant sale. And I'm totally ripping this idea off for Grotto. Um, what they did was they, people brought in different gifts and they had them in gift bags and they were stapled shut and they auctioned the bags off, but you don't know what's in them. So it's, it gets kind of fun. Um, nobody got anything horrible. It was just, you know, stuff that ranged probably from like $3 to $20 and, you know, everybody had fun. But I'm going to put a slight twist on it for Grotto. I'm going to have half the bags be something completely awful. And I'm going to have half the bags be something completely awesome. So, you know, people might be bidding on something and they just get like dollar store marijuana drug testing kits or or warming <laughs> personal lubricant. Or they may get some gems of, you know, like I've got some uh, Masonic things in my house that I bought or I acquired that I don't use anymore. I mean, I probably have like three or four Masonic rings that they're nothing fancy, but I don't use them anymore. But, you know, hey, maybe a new brother might want a hundred dollar ring that I'm not wearing. So I won uh, on VHS uh, Buns of Steel a few years ago. Christmas. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Same idea. A family Christmas thing. How did it work out for you? My buns are not made of steel. The um, I had one other Masonic thing and I can't I remember. I can look at you and tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, AMD. Yeah. I had an AMD meeting. Um, that was a. Uh, that's my one chance in Freemasonry to act like a civilized human being, and I just kind of like sit back and listen to the more experienced brothers just be a little bit more eloquent than I am. Um, somehow or other, you know, we just, the chain of command in our AMD group, um, somehow or other, I'm chaplain this year. Um, it's just an appointed position. I'm going to be one step higher. But sitting next to me was our previous guest, the Reverend Dr. Christopher Rodkey. Oh, who's got Lord. um he's got two degrees in like divinity and he's like just <laughs> so they like uh they asked me to do the do the do the prayer so of course i stole the prayer from uh, our our friend scott hoover and i led the whole table in a uh in a moment of silence <laughs> as the prayer and people are like the all these old 33rd guys are looking at me like what are you doing i'm like i'm sorry the guy next to me's got a double doctorate in divinity um, I really can't compete with that. So I'm just going to throw in the cards and just do a moment of silence, and they all left. So That was perfect. And then, Larry, you have nothing. I, I really I really don't, Pete. Literally, I have pretty much had the summer off after the trip trying to take care of my leg and stuff like that. The Ghost and Gridiron, but Jason already talked about that. That's uh, about, I stole your thunder. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that, that's been the bulk of what I've been doing this summer. Um, you had some company with you today, though. Yeah, it was kind of Children's Day today, wasn't it? It was. It was family day. Yeah, my family uh, from France is <clears throat> visiting. They've been here since last Tuesday. It's been a long visit, and they won't be leaving until next Thursday. Uh, so we brought them to breakfast. They have actually been to Goose and Gridiron breakfast two times before today. And they're great kids. They really are. They're, they're in their 20s. And to be completely American, where do you take these kids every time they uh, they come here from France? <laughs> Either Park City, Dine. Oh, the gun thing. Yeah, we're going to the gun range on uh, on Monday morning. Nice. Yeah, yeah. They love they love to shoot. Guns. So they probably have, will have more training than anybody in the French military. But, uh... I told my granddaughter Elmay today. I said, you know, with your background, you could join the French Reserve right now, and you know more than most people joining it. That's a, that's awesome. That's that terrible. Was, I just got a smile out of that one. <laughs> We had one more Masonic thing, if you want to talk about that, Larry. We, uh, we spent the afternoon, you set this up, we spent the afternoon today at High 12. High 12, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Had a great presentation with High 12. We actually, uh, Pete, Jason, myself, uh, went there and explained what a podcast is. And we talked to the members about, uh, you know, what we do, why we do it, what our philosophy was for putting together the show. Half, it, and half the crowd liked it. Yeah, they did. Believe and it or not. The other half was like, oh, the other why half? are you making fun of Freemasonry? Oh, they, they, they enjoyed their nap. <laughs> no, I'd say the other half that you think we're, make, we're, we're, we're questioning that. 25% of them weren't even in the room, but their bodies were. So, 
I think the best part about this afternoon is the clips that we played them was the episode when we talked about High 12. And uh, I needed to edit everything that you had to say about them, Pete. But uh, I think we got a passable version for them today. I think the best thing was I got a free lunch. Yeah. So yeah. so episode seven, maybe eight, I think it was. I think it's seven that uh, we had Jeff Moyer on and we spoke about High 12. If you yeah, want to go back seven. and listen to that. was seven. All right. Well, we've caught up all up on the Masonic stuff. Let's take a uh, quick break. And uh, we'll come back with some more Masonic lightness. This is Tom LeBaugh from Abraham C. Trichler Lodge, number 682 in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. You are listening to the Masonic Light Podcast, Masonic Conversation Without Pretension. Okay, and we're back. Um, so today's show is going to be a little shorter and a little more, a little different than normal because uh, the main thing about this show was just trying to see if we could figure out the equipment, if we knew how to figure it out before we tortured a guest. So far, so good. Um, yeah. the, the proof will be when we actually play it back and uh, post it up on the internet. But So one of the things that we're talking about, we want to have some different things on our show. Eventually, we want to try and get to a, a set format that we kind of stick with. And something we've been toying with was we've been finding that there's a... No, no, whoa, whoa. A oh, set Jesus. format. <laughs> a set format that you want to stick with. I've been giving you set formats for the past six, yeah, six shows. But, yeah, you know, but your scripts stuck. are horrible, Larry. That's only because you're, if you give me a good script, maybe we'll stick with it. Does he, does, does he follow them? Does, I've never seen you really follow a script, though. Nah, I, know you, I know you print them out. Because he doesn't. Because Peter doesn't, and I figure out. Oh, like, One of the things I think that would be great about having our own uh, equipment is that we can start to collect a uh, a selection of Larry's ramblings, and maybe we can make a best of some show. Right. And plus, with us having the equipment and not having to get people to go down to the studio, uh, we can record individuals without having the rest of the crew here. So if we happen to run into somebody that we think we might be a... Uh, a good guest or somebody that's got a crazy voice that would do a good uh, voiceover for a commercial or something for us, we can just grab them. Yep. And we're mobile, yeah. so we can t- – right now we're coming to you from the Masonic Center, but we could go anywhere. So a thing that we've been talking about was, um, you know, the history of the Masonic fraternity. Of course, there's so much fratern- so much history that's written down that's boring, that's like, you know, the nuts and bolts, uh, the, the meeting you know, that we'd opened here, it closed here. Just read any minutes from any meeting. Um, from anywhere from the 1800s till now, and they're equally as boring. But I'm 47. Larry, how old are you? 80? No, 72. Same thing. All right. <laughs> and Jason, how old are you? 38. Okay. So, Larry, we'll have to use you as an example. As you're the uh, the youngest old guy. Like, like people that grew up and were young men in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, they saw some cool shit. They saw some horrible stuff, too. I mean, like, you know, with different wars and things like that. But, you know, my generation was pretty much spared that. If, you know, I've got a lot of friends that, you know, they've volunteered to go to, you know, the the desert and things like that. But, you know, for the most part, my generation's kind of skated by pretty, pretty, pretty easy. But when you play hard, there's also got to be some fun stories back there, too. And, you know, some of these old guys that are maybe 50, 60, 70 year Masons, I bet they have some awesome stories from when they're in their 20s and 30s about some of the stuff that they did before Lodge, after Lodge, you know. Back then, they still were able to do some pranks and have some fun. You know, the fun hasn't been, wasn't totally beaten out of Freemasonry yet. So uh, we're going to do some interviews there if we can. But for our audience... If you have any great stories, even contemporary stories, if you have some great fun stories about something from your lodge or from one of your your independent bodies, either call us or just just pull out your cell phone and do a digital recording and send us the file. Because I just I think we have a great opportunity here to record some things uh, of the past before they're gone. Yeah, I think it's an, an excellent idea. Um, one of the things that we try to do, we, we, uh, we troll the internet. 
we look for uh, good stories. We look for good news. And we also look for things with a bit of humor. And I know all of us have had speaking engagements before various lodges and appendant bodies. And one of the things I always love to do is open up a uh, a speech that I give with a joke or end it with a joke. Well, that's what Dale Carnegie told you guys 30 years ago, and you yeah, can't get around yeah, it. Yeah, you can't get around it. But when I go and I Google um, Freemasonry jokes, they're not there. There are 30, I swear, 32 jokes that are on every website that has to do with Freem- Freemasonry and, and jokes and humor. It doesn't exist. It's like we are totally humorless, and that's not the case. I mean, look at this show. I mean, yeah, but there's a few of those that are funny. Yeah. You know, like the how many past, past uh, masters does it take to change a light bulb? How many? Change? <laughs> what, are you ta- what are you talking about? So here, here's the only funny joke, the only funny Masonic joke, and I think it's completely uh, within, within bounds. And I think it's fair to say for our listeners that uh, we just deleted about five minutes of Larry giving away ritual, so <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> So my only, only funny Masonic joke is, um, you know, this older Jewish couple, they, uh, they were looking for an apartment, and they moved in. They got this apartment, and it was, happened to be below a Masonic lodge. And, you know, the, the landlords told them, hey, it's a, it's a really quiet place uh, because, really, the, the, the guys upstairs only meet there once or twice a month. So, um, so the couple, you know, they're there. They love their nice, quiet apartment, and... And apparently it was meeting day, and you know there's all these cars in the parking lot, and all these men start coming in in suits and tuxedos, and well the the uh, the man was kind of like curious as to what was going on, so he uh, got a chair out from the uh, table and stood up on the chair and was trying to listen at the floor and uh, trying to hear what happened, and he hears a big commotion going on up there, and. All of a sudden, he just gets a serious look on his face, and he tells the wife, hey, get the car keys. We got to get out of here. She's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm pretty sure they just killed somebody, and they're trying to blame it on the Jew below. So, anyway, that's, that's, yeah, that's my, my Masonic humor. <laughs> so, what do we have for guests coming up? We have, finally, uh, Jonna Hoover. So, and Jonna comes from a family rooted in Freemasonry. Her father's a member of Year Lodge, and every single one of her siblings, all six of them, are all involved in the fraternity in some sorts, and all of their children are getting involved in youth groups, so, and it goes back to the and grandfather. And the mom, Sandy, is involved in yep. all the ladies' groups, and she's steward for most of the men's groups. I think it's interesting because... You know, in the 50s and the 60s, you were either a Masonic family or you weren't. You know, this day and age, everybody has somewhere to go, soccer practice, gymnastics, you name it, whatever. But uh, back in the day, you know, either the entire family went to lodge or they didn't. And it will be interesting to see what the modern true Masonic family really looks like. So so she's coming up. Uh, I don't know who else we have lined up. Well, I am working on getting a past grandmaster. Yeah, you've been threatening and, that for, but he is not returning your calls. It, <laughs> I think he's in the building in a little bit here. No, he's not. There's a there's a past masters meeting going on for the district downstairs. Yeah, but he's past grandmaster. That's a whole other. Well, world. he's a past master too. Right. That's right. He is. Uh, yeah, he is. But how come? How, I just want to know: is it by accident or on purpose that the, myself, past master of Lamberton Lodge, four hundred and seventy six free and accepted masons of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania was not invited to this past master's meeting. That's because you're on Masonic Light, and we have some hidden... Ah, never mind, I want to go on that. I guess I'm not... But a, not everybody I, likes us. I'm not an apron stiffer. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but uh, they didn't invite me. I'm going to crash their party. <laughs> um, but I think I, um, I'm going to try to get Tom the ball. Tom is the head of the Pennsylvania Youth Foundation. Pennsylvania Masonic Youth Foundation, yep. Yeah, and he uh very accomplished Masonic um, resume, and he did a degree for me once when I was master. He put on a, a third degree that was one of the best third degrees I ever saw, um, and he has some interesting stories. He's uh, His his son, David, was the most recent past monarch of Ubar Grotto before me, and there's a you know, really cool story there with um, Dave, uh, another gentleman in our grotto— um, was in really poor health and needed a liver transplant or he was going to die. And uh, 
David stepped up and to be a living donor and donated half his liver to Alan, which is, you know, probably the most selfless thing I've ever seen. Maybe we can get both of them on. Well, I guess if we get Alan, we technically have both of them. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't like my one joke when, uh, what, what did, uh, <laughs> what did David's liver say to Alan? I want to be inside you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they didn't like my joke there, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was really one of the most amazing things. And I think that was like six months ago, roughly the surgery happened. And last weekend, Dave ran an Ironman triathlon. So somehow, and there was a couple months there afterwards where he wasn't allowed to do anything. You know, he just had a heel. I played dodgeball against the uh, DMLA and he was on my team and that was his first, uh, real test of exercise and, and he did fine. Yeah, so somehow he managed to run like a thousand miles, swim two billion miles, and whatever exactly. is involved there. Some that, of those things were thirty-six miles and seventy miles, and God, the swimming was unbelievable. Yeah, I think it was thirty-six miles swimming. Seriously, we spoke briefly. He doesn't know about it, but uh, we talked about maybe Ed Stum get the Grand Tyler. Ed would be great. Ed's got a very. Um, if you're not from Central Pennsylvania, you, you won't know what we're talking about. But Ed has a very Pennsylvania Dutch accent, and it, it's just—it's a treat to listen to him talk. We also want to get Garofsky in here, basically, which that's a totally different accent. You folks in New York will totally understand him, but yeah, and uh, he's yeah, Joey G—he's a, a pharmacist or pharmacy tech, one or the other, uh, originally from New York or Philly or both. 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 Yeah, so he's got a real, real great accent. But he, he was telling us some great stories about when he was young. Yeah. And, you know, at like 15, just decided to, he wanted to travel across the country on foot. Wow. Um, got a lot of good stories there. Yeah. And he's got a lot of humor to him, too. He's a funny guy. Well, anything else, Jason? So well, we're keep one this thing short. I want to mention is Uh-oh. we are going to expand our interviewing skills to other places. Uh, we're, are we ready or are we working at... Getting interviews on Skype from yeah, people next, from all over the world, actually. The next step is working on the, uh, the tech side and, and be able to import some calls. And I think, we're, I think we're pretty close. And Jack Quinlan, listening in Victoria, Australia, get ready to do an interview, my friend. That's not his last name. What it's is Aqu- it? Aquilina? I Aquilina? Are you- oh, Jack Quinlan's a guy from, I'm sorry, he's from Dublin. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. For God's sake, Larry, take your meds. <laughs> Speaking of the land uh, down under, we uh, we should give a, a big shout out to the, the Blue Lounge. Yeah, that's Jack's show. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. See, it all ties together. It does. Well, those guys gave us a very nice compliment. So it's not thanks, the Irishman's show. It's Quinlan, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. So in any event, brought to light from Australia. Thanks for the shout out. We love you guys. Keep it up. Um. So I guess we're just going to wrap it up here. Um, let's have a quick commercial by by ourselves. Uh, so, uh, here I'll talk about Larry, Larry's product and then he can talk about my product. Okay. So Larry, uh, wrote a book a few years back called the red serpent. It's kind of like a mystery intrigue, kind of like a Dan Brown esque type book. Uh, there's definitely some Masonic undertones in the book. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think you'd enjoy it too. You can get it at, uh, www.larrymaris.com. Or Amazon, or Kindle, Kindle, or Barnes and Noble. You could probably find it used on eBay for like a dime. And it is sold in most of the countries, I believe, in uh, in uh, Europe and Japan and India. Australia has it too, by the way. Okay, is yeah. it written le- right to left in Australia? No, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, Larry. Why don't you give a commercial for my product? Okay, Masonic scarves. Folks, I'm going to tell you some of the quality of Masonic scarves is outstanding. When we look at the color, we look at the logos that are woven into these garments. I'm telling you, they're first class. He's got. I have Amish women in my basement. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Knitting these things at uh, and under the, duress. And if they are slow, the dogs. Your wife was Mennonite. Yeah. <laughs> and if they're if they actually slow down on you, you stick you stick the dogs on them. So best thing about these things is besides I have lots of different uh, scarves available, if your lodge or um, organization is having a fundraiser, drop me an email. If you order 50, I can design you whatever you want, 
And as soon as you approve the art, um, it'll be at your door in four weeks. Also, folks, for the ladies out there, he's got one of the most fantastic Eastern star um, a scarf I've ever seen. It's beautiful. Well, thank you, Larry. Masonic scarves. And uh, MasonicScarves.com. Larry, or Jason, what do you sell? Do you sell anything? I don't sell anything yet, but uh, I have an idea. I think that uh, when we get our goose and gridiron pin, will be available at MasonicScarves.com. Correct? Is that the website? And uh, maybe we can do like a package deal. The Red Serpent, a scarf, and a goose and gridiron pin. Boom. Boom. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's, uh... And I'll even autograph it. Um, it'll be $5 less if you don't on it. It'll be worth more if he doesn't autograph it. <laughs> yeah, I have no other products other than Goose and Gridiron, but uh, as soon as those are live, we'll get them on a website, and uh, that will help fund this podcast, and away we go. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. We're going to be back probably in a, uh, a week, less than a week, and we are going to have a real live guest again and a real live format again. I think we would be remiss not to offer our listeners Larry's ramblings and let them close the show and give our proper thanks. Okay. Oh, oh. I want to give special thanks. Listen, Mason Kibler, if you are listening to this, we do miss you. Thank you for all your help and your guidance. He's going to edit the same thing. Oh, okay. The heck he's going to be one Forget of the, it. He's going to be one. That, you're still on the payroll. Forget well, we're going to have to pre-edit because he can't hear the Masonic stuff that Larry said. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just quick make him a Mason that's at sight. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good name. Uh, also, two special thanks to uh, our foreign news correspondents. Uh, I'm a blather, and I don't know who the other one is. I don't have. A I think it was uh, not a worthy. Not a worthy, exactly. To uh, Rocco, how's Rocco doing? By the way, is he over his girlfriend? Rocco's uh, doing really well right now. He's uh, he ate some uh, cucumbers from my garden, and uh, he's uh, for now fertilizing the rest of the yard. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we miss him. You need to bring him in here more often. Also, two special guests. Uh, Jason's a member of the staff now, so I'm going to still say thanks. Did we do a newscast? No, we didn't. There's no news. We didn't do a newscast, folks. It's, we're sorry about that. Because this is a test run. We're not totally prepared, but when we come back next week, we will be. Uh, and I'll close out by giving thanks to our law firm who really keeps us out of trouble. I forgot to make <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Forget it. I'll make, up. I'll make up for it next week. Larry's been off his meds all day. In any event, this is Jason Lewis. This is Pete Ruggieri. This is Larry Maris. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day. Bye-bye.